All right. The machine I have here is the Victor Victrola 35. This was Victrola's second portable. Introduced in 1923, continued through 1924. And uh, you can probably see some similarities between this and the HMV 100 I had in another video. Mostly that reflector parabolic uh, horn right there. That's polished aluminum. Same as on the uh, 100. This does not have the retractable tone arm of the 100. Too bad. But otherwise, it's a pretty similar machine. Same size, basically. Same. This would be called Rexine if this was an English machine. This is a Victor product, so this is going to be uh, just basically cloth or fake leather, leatherette if you want, something like that. A single spring motor. This has a motor that was originally designed for a portable, unlike the Victor Vitrola 50, which had a tabletop motor repurposed for it, and it's uh, considerably larger and thicker because of it. This is a smaller machine. It's a suitcase size machine. It's not very big. It's not very heavy. Much more in keeping with what a portable really should be because you want something that's light enough to tote around without getting out of breath and all of that. It fits easily in the car. This particular machine has been in my Model T for several years, actually more like 10 years. And I recently brought it out and I refurbished it a little bit, cleaned it up, you know, and uh, re-greased everything. And here it is. It's back together. This one had the number two reproducer right from the start. It did never had the exhibition. It's always had the number two. As you can see, it plays the 10-inch records, and like the later orthophonic machines, it has the orange turntable felt. That's a hallmark of the later Victor machines, post-1924-25. Other than that, you see some similar items here to the 50, like the speed control. The tone arm itself is very much the same size. And this has, this particular one has the large Victor Victrola 50 style corner protectors, which some did not. They had a thin strip of steel here instead. It went down like this. They both did the same job, but I think these look actually a little bit better than, the, uh, than that steel strip does, which is just painted steel. Let's take a look around. You see it's pretty nice shape all around for its age. And why don't we play a record on it? We have Just Leave Me Alone by Jack Chapman and his Drake Hotel Orchestra. Spins right up.
plays nice for its age, but then it should, since everything's been rebuilt, including the reproducer. The motor's been cleaned and lubed like it should be. The spring, however, is original in this. Did not need to be changed. And this just folds right back like this. Oops. Snaps in. The record, if you wanted to, could go up here in this little compartment. So why don't we take that out of there? See, just we'll slide right in there. Although it doesn't need to go there because I have a case for them. And I will demonstrate. First, close that. You need to take this off, the crank, or the winding key, if you prefer. Like that. Now you see how that fits in there? There are other cranks that are of similar size, but only the one made for the Victor Vitrola 35 will stow away neatly and correctly like that, be able to snake down in there. Only the one that belongs to this machine. So don't try to fake a VV50 crank in there, it's not going to work too well. Now I'll demonstrate the size in comparison to the Victor Vitrola 50. That is your 35. And there's your 50. Now you can see there are similarities and a lot of differences. One of them is it is considerably smaller than Victor Patrol 35 is. It doesn't use all the fancy veneers except a little bit on the turn on the uh, motor motorboard. Very similar handle. Crank discussion, same thing, same corners here. You can see the latch is the same. But that's where it ends. While you have on one of them the black leatherette. The other one has all the fancy veneers and woods. These are also made from hard, good hardwoods. Well, this one had basic wood with no particular grain because it didn't need it. It was hidden underneath all the, uh, the fabric cover. And they hold up pretty well, surprisingly, considering the age of this machine. It's in very good condition. Well, there you go. That's the Victor Vitrola 35. You're going to see more of these because I'm a little behind on these ones. Well, I've done lots of Victor Vitrola 50s. I must have four or five Victor Vitrola 35s still packed away in boxes waiting for me to get to them. They need servicing and all of that. Some of them might need parts and springs, reproducers rebuilt. You know, I've been lagging on those ones, so it's time to get to them now that I've started. Although I have plenty more Victor Vitrola 50s to do. I'd like to vary it a little bit. And you can see it has the side crank also. That was another one of these. The Victor Vitrola 35 never had a crank in the front. While the English machine started off with the, with the HMV 100 using basically this style box and this style machine, the 100 had the crank in the front. Kind of awkward, like the first Victor Vitrola 50s did. But the 35 went right to the side. It's straight crank. It's not an angled crank. That wouldn't come along for a little while yet. But it's still... You don't knock your hands on your knuckles on a table because it is short enough not to do that. And of course, unlike the stationary handle here, this handle pulls down like that if you want it out of the way. But while this handle will easily come off, you see that just unscrews and you can take the handle off because a lot of times they knew people would use these in the house and they wouldn't want a handle on it. You can take the handle off and stow it. This one, the handle was permanently mounted as a nut and a bolt there. They don't come out too easily. So they compromise by just having it stow out of the way if that's how you wanted to keep it. And there you go. That's the Victor Vitrola 35.